Hey guys, and welcome to this Assassination Rogue Arena playstyle guide. In this guide we're going to be covering compositions, a brief update on any trait and talent changes, and rounded it up with a section on assassination gameplay and how you should approach arena games. Currently, assassination is in a great spot. It's without a doubt the strongest melee currently. Due to this, there are a lot of viable comps, so I'm just going to cover what the top rogues consider the three best compositions currently. The strongest comp currently is RMP, which is Rogue Mage Priest. Played primarily with a Frost Mage, this composition likes to win in burst setups while crowd controlling off targets. You want to be primarily looking to crowd control the healer with Fear and Polymorph, while stunning and focusing on one DPS. Playing Assassination, you take less of a utility and crowd control based role and become the primary damage dealer, putting the majority of kidney shots into your main target. Up next for our number 2 comp we have RPS which is Rogue, Shadow Priest, Resto Shaman. You again want to be primarily focusing on one DPS, but however unlike when playing with a mage who will polymorph your bleeds off on the third target, you can actually bleed up and get poisons on multiple targets to gain some spread pressure. However the game plan should still primarily be the same, just looking to crowd control the enemy healer with silence and psychic scream and possibly a hex from your shaman when possible. Last up is Rogue Mage Druid, similar to RMP. You look to do the same setups, but with Druid being unlike Priest and bringing no damage, you rely more on crowd control with your Druid and Mage rotating Cyclone and Polymorph to secure kills. For a more detailed analysis and information on talents and traits, check out our Get Started guide for assassination. For traits however, you still want him to be running 1 Shrouded Suffocation and 2 Twister Knife. However, you can also make use of traits like Battlefield Precision and Scent of Blood instead of Twist the Knife. And your talents should still look like this. Assassination Rogue, unlike Sub, doesn't have the huge amount of utility and ability to control the game and set up your team. What it does bring, however, is very high consistent pressure as well as burst damage combined with a heavy Mortal Strike healing reduction debuff. Assuming you have the correct Azerite traits, Garok gives you 2 extra combo points when opening, thus giving you 3 combo points per Garok, on top of the increased damage. This means getting up Garok in the opener should always be your number one priority. And when looking to deal spread pressure, applying 2 Garoks from stealth can often put the enemy instantly on the back foot. Also, if looking to crowd control the healer, you should aim to be opening with a sap. The ideal opener looks like this. Sap onto the enemy healer, Cheap shot into Garot onto the main target, giving you 5 combo points. With these, you should be applying Rupture. At this point, what you do next relies heavily on what composition you are playing and how you want to approach the game. The first option you have is to go for the spread pressure approach, not committing your kidney shot to the DPS and holding onto your combo points to swap to the healer after the sap expires, as seen here by Peekaboo. He uses his 5 combo points to step to the monk and apply his poisons, garrote and rupture, meaning now he has his damage rolling on both targets, creating that spread pressure. The second option is where you'll be continuing your CC chain onto the healer after the sap. This opener is primarily used in control comps such as RMP or RMD, where your opener should look like this. Waz saps the healer, garrotes the shaman into a kidney shot. then applies his rupture using mark for death and then continues his normal damage rotation. It's worth noting here, Waz also chooses to garrote the warrior as mentioned earlier. When you have the option to garrote multiple people take it, as the increased damage and combo point generation from applying a stealthed garrote is always worth taking. Bear in mind if the enemy team gets into combat or you are unable to sap, replace the sap with a cheap shot giving your mage or healer the chance to follow up with crowd control. If you're unable to get a sap onto the enemy healer, this could be for a few reasons. Mainly that either your target or the enemy healer is in stealth, so opening with a sap is just not possible. This opener is primarily for RMP or RMD. Here you can see Waz is unable to get a sap onto the healer. 
So what he does instead is cheap shot, then garrote his main target. This enables his mage to follow up with a polymorph, while their main target is unable to prevent it. He then uses 5 combo points to kidney shot, and then uses a marked for death rupture. Now you know how you should be opening, let's cover your normal rotation and how you should approach doing damage. The general rotation for assassination is quite simple. You have one main focus and that is to maintain your two bleeds onto the target. These are Rupture and Garot. After you have these two bleeds up on your next goal is to build up combo points. You do this either via Mutilate, Fan of Knives or Poison Knife. Mutilate costs 50 energy and gives you two baseline combo points but can give you up to 4 depending on if your main hand and off hand crit. This is your main combo point generator. In certain situations where you are unable to reach your target or want to apply your poisons to another target for the increased damage or slow, poison knife should be used. Your final way to generate combo points is fan of knives. This should be used as a tool to spread your poisons and generate combo points when targets stack up or there are pets. It's also worth noting Garot and Toxic Blade generate a combo point. Garot should be used off cooldown and we cover Toxic Blade when we get to cooldown usage. You have two main ways to spend your combo points outside of keeping up Rupture. These are Envenom and Kidney Shot. Kidney Shot should be used off cooldown. Diminishing returns are 18 seconds, so before using it make sure your target is not on stun DR. Kidney Shot not only locks down the target but also deals good damage and gives you energy regeneration thanks to internal bleeding affecting venomous wounds. Kidney Shot as assassination should be primarily used mainly onto your kill target. However, there are some rare occasions where Kidney Shot onto the healer will help extend the CC chain ensuring you get a kill. This is a rare occasion but one worth looking out for. Take this situation here for example. Peekaboo cannot get to the mage but has his damage rolling already. The Paladin is off stun DR but they have no CC currently. Peekaboo opts to use his Kidney Shot to force the Paladin to fall behind on healing. Forcing the Mage's Cauterize as well as the Bubble Sacrifice. If he was to Kidney the Mage here, all they would have forced is just Sacrifice. Vendetta is your main offensive cooldown for assassination. Not only does it buff your damage by 30%, but also gives you full vision of that target and more importantly 20 energy every 1 second for 3 seconds. Before using Vendetta, you should first make sure you have both Garot and Rupture up onto your target and it's best combined with a Kidney Shot, so you have the full energy regeneration from Venomous Wounds and Vendetta, meaning you can spam Mutilates and Envenoms during this window, giving you some insane burst. Look to also combine Vendetta in either a smoke bomb or with some form of crowd control onto the enemy healer if choosing to hit a DPS. Toxic Blade is up next. This ability costs 20 energy and gives you a combo point and also buffs all further nature damage by 30% meaning your poison damage as well as your envenom will be hitting hard. This is best combined when you have uptime onto the target and should always be looked to use whilst having Vendetta up. Look to use when bursting inside of a kidney shot to deal some increased damage. Last up is Vanish. This ability has multiple uses and is best saved for blind, which we'll get into more detail on later. However, Vanish offers some great offensive capabilities, allowing you to get off a stealth garrote, silencing the target and dealing extra damage, and also generating the additional combo points thanks to Shrouded Suffocation. Vanish should all only be used offensively when you are primarily focusing onto a healer and know it will secure the kill. For example, here, Peekaboo is doing a setup onto the Druid. He knows if the Druid is unable to cast any heals once leaving the stun, he will for sure die, so he uses his Vanish to secure the Garrote Silence into an Envenom, ensuring the kill. Unlike their sub counterparts, Assassination Rogues lack a huge amount of crowd control and utility that sub brings. In this section we're going to be covering how to use what limited CC you have available to help secure kills. 
Blind is a two minute cooldown and by far Rogue's strongest ability. It can help either secure a kill when trinkets are down or be the defining factor on if an enemy is going to have to trinket or not. Blind is best used onto a healer unless it's a dire situation where you need to survive. Always look to have Vanish up when wanted to blind as you are easily able to follow up with a sap if the target decides to sit through the blind. Using blind correctly as a rogue is very important in mastering the class. There is two main uses. Number one is to use it to force a trinket from your opponent without committing large offensive cooldowns. Here we can see Peekaboo blinding the Resto Druid, who instantly trinkets. Peekaboo has not yet committed his Vendetta. This gives them a window where the enemy Druid has no trinket, but he still has Vendetta. Here a few moments later, we can see Peekaboo commits his Vendetta and they end up killing the trinketless Druid, all down to baiting his trinket with the blind. The second use is to, to do it on a target who has already trinketed, allowing you to then land the sap, giving you 16 seconds of unavoidable instant CC. Assassination has a few tools available to help them survive. These are Crimson Vial, Faint, Cloak of Shadows and Evasion. Evasion is best used when your healer is in crowd control and you are under pressure by one or more melee DPS. So the 100% dodge, dodge chance will ensure you stay alive. Here we can see Waz's healer getting crowd control as the melee swap to him. He instantly uses his evasion as he knows he will be taking an immense amount of burst, allowing him to survive until his healer is out of crowd control. Faint is a little harder to use as it needs to be used preemptively. As you can see here, Peekaboo senses that the enemy team will do a setup onto him. The enemy team polymorph his shaman and then use orb on him. He reacts to this by instantly using his faint. This gives him the damage reduction for the entirety of the stuns, meaning he comes out alive. Cloak of Shadows is much like evasion, but this time giving you immunity to all spells. This should be used versus casters or magic damage dealing melee, primarily used as a defensive when your healer is in crowd control and you need a defensive to survive. Here we can see Peekaboo under pressure by the opposing rogue mage. They commit orb while his healer is crowd controlled. He reacts by pressing trinket as well as cloak of shadows to survive until the setup is over. Because of the ability to immune spells, cloak also doubles up as an offensive cooldown. You're able to use it to either immune magical pills from the opposing team during setups or to maintain uptime. Be very careful when doing this though, as not having this later could potentially mean your demise. Last up is Crimson Vial. All this does is offer some small self healing over 6 seconds. This can be used in conjunction with any of the other defensive cooldowns you have at your disposal. Also as a way to simply help your healer out. As seen here, Waz comes out of the enemy setup. He uses his Crimson Vial to simply gain some extra healing to help his priest recover. To wrap up this section, we're going to be covering mobility. Rogue has two main tools to have uptime onto their target. These are Shadow Step and Sprint. Bear in mind Vanish and Cloak can also be used to help maintain uptime, but is not their primary use, so be cautious for when using these for this reason. Shadow Step will simply teleport you behind a target within 25 yards on a 30 second cooldown. Its main use is to simply connect to a target. However, you can use it to step to a friendly teammate to survive or escape. With Shadow Step being your main mobility, correctly using it is very important. You don't want to step to your target just to have them to instantly get away. This means combining it with a kidney shot can ensure you have good uptime onto your target and means they are unable to kite you. Also, you are able to take the enemies by surprise if you instantly step and then stun. It gives them no time to prepare. In this example, we can see Peekaboo step to the Druid and then instantly kidney shot. This gives the Druid no time to get into bear form or to react to the swap. Sprint gives you a 70% movement speed for 8 seconds, but however does not remove slows or roots, so mainly use it when you need to move around the map fast, such as to blind a healer and then get back to the DPS, or to kite melee. If specced into maneuverability, Sprint will also remove slows, but still not roots, so take in maneuverability against things such as mages or elementals who like to consistently kite with slows will help in maintaining uptime. Combining these two talents to maintain uptime is vital for Rogue. Here in this example, we can see Peekaboo utilizing both his step and his sprint. He steps to the enemy priest to follow up the blind with a sap, then uses his sprint to get back onto the mage. 
Okay guys, that just about wraps up this Assassination Arena playstyle guide. Be sure to leave any comments you still may have below. Thanks for watching.